Okay, so I don't I don't want to take a lot of time. Uh, sorry for this short notice, uh, but we felt it's right. Uh, we have a, just a small session in terms of uh, mental skills and uh, nutrition. Uh, the specialists are based in Nairobi, uh, so that and the period that we have between now and the time of traveling is very short. So we felt that it would be appropriate just to have an online brief, uh, online uh, briefs. Uh, the specialist will share their contacts, and uh, and you can get in touch. You can get in touch as an individual to find out more from them. Otherwise, um, I won't take a lot of time. Already we are late on schedule. I'm sorry for that. And uh, I'll just go ahead and invite uh, Rowena, who is uh, a psychologist, and she'll be taking us through uh, the mental skills in terms of uh, preparations and competition. Thank you. And uh, welcome, Rowena. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, so um, could you please allow me to share so that I share this presentation I have? Okay. Okay, Tony, are we? Yes, you can share. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I hope everyone can see that. Yes, you can on my. Okay, so good morning, everyone. My name is Rowena Tirop. I am a sport and exercise psychologist. I've worked with various teams, um, based in Nairobi, and today I'll take you through a brief, a few minute session on just mental skills for competitive success. Um. Right there, you'll see the session overview. We'll define what sports psychology is, talk about some mental skills, the importance of mental skills in performance, common problems faced, psychological skills, key components of sports psychology, psychological factors affecting performance perform and performance enhancement. So the first um, on the first slide, you'll see there's a quote that I really like which reads, the attitude with which we approach the situation can determine our success or failure by Peyton Money. So <clears throat> what is sports psychology? Um, it's basically the study of psychological factors that are associated with participation and performance in sport and exercise, also physical activities. So we deal with um, you know, psychological knowledge and skill to enhance your performance, optimizing it, increasing growth, and overcoming any mental adversities that you may face in your career. Um, so on the first line there, you can see what um, the basketball legend Karim Abdul-Jabbar um, said, which is just a beautiful summary of you know, the mental aspect of sports. He says, your mind is what makes everything else work. And also, Novak Djokovic adds on to that, and it's a mental it's a mental ability to handle the pressure, to play well at the right moments. Um, there are two main objectives in sports psychology: so understanding how psychological factors that's how our mind and you know anything that is anything that does you know thoughts, emotion, how it affects your performance, and then understanding how participation affects your psychological development, that's mental development, your health and your well-being. So, okay, what are the importance of mental skills in performance? It helps athletes, coaches in understanding their own thought patterns and biases, um, builds strength and acknowledges weakness, weaknesses, builds confidence and pushes one to beyond their limits. We also work hand in hand with coaches and various sports professionals to develop actual physical skills athletes can depend on and help them improve. And this ties into the last point there where mental skills concepts in sports psychology are important in optimizing performance and achieving success in your sport. So we will, we, together with your coaches, we give you and show you tips and techniques mental, of mental skills which you can 
and you can apply in your sport while you play before and after. So here are some common problems faced and later on, maybe some of you can share if you know what problems you, you face. You know, there's a pressure to perform, stress and anxiety, distractions, that is fans, also playing away, playing in a different country, the weather, under and over arousal, this is the alertness motivation that one has. So if, if it's low, it can be detrimental to performance. And if it's too high, it can also um, hurt your performance. Low or no motivation, no or low group cohesion. And this also applies to individual sport. As much as you're playing an individual sport, you're still within a team. And then injury, as well, and then changes that may occur both in and out of sport. So here are some of the psychological skills. Goal setting, which is pretty straightforward. Um, setting goals that are, are attainable, achievable, measurable, timely, and realistic. Positive self-talk. How do you talk to yourself before, during, or after your, your games and matches? Um, Self-talk is, you know, that voice you hear inside you when you're about to, you know, to go and play, when you're in the game in itself. So how is that? Then we have imagery or visualization. This is a technique we use before, um, before any sporting, any match or any game, where you visualize and you, you see yourself performing the skills that you need to perform. You see yourself in the game and how, you know, just... You, you break it down step by step, but you're seeing yourself do it all. Then motivation. So how will we increase motivation and looking at motivation as being from outside now from your teammates, your coaches, your families, and also from within you, what are you, what keeps, what makes you want to play the sport that you're, that you're playing? Then we have relaxation techniques. This can be used before um, such as deep breathing can also be used after. So taking deep breaths, I will take you all through that um, in a later session, but yeah. Then there's anxiety management when, you know, there's anxiety has, uh, there's two, two, there's three levels to anxiety. There's the extremely, you know, high and detrimental anxiety, which just takes you out of the game. You're anxious all the time. You're feeling jittery, you're feeling like, you know, you can't think and move. And then it's, it's not necessarily bad, but if we get to the sweet spot where you're able to use it as a motivator, something that's pushing you, you change the ang anxious feelings into excitement. Then now we have concentration or intentional focus and control. This uh, skill helps you know when to focus on everything within your line of sight or on one thing in your line of sight. So here are some key components of, psych of sports psychology. Psychological factors such as motivation, confidence, focus, and emotional control can significantly affect your performance. And this is pretty straightforward where you know if you have low motivation, you will not perform as well as you would like to. Even low confidence and inability to focus and inability to control your emotion. So our goal here is to work with you to get you to the right um, level where your motivation, confidence, focus, emotional control, you're able to do those things um, well and interchangeably. Also, sports psychology, there's, with sports psychology, you know, there's a mind-body connection. So your mind and body work in hand in hand. So, and that is thoughts, emotions really do affect how we play, learn, taking information and also now output. So that's now our performance. So when we understand the psychological aspects of sports, that is what we spoke about before, um, we are able to just to, to move in a way that you know our performance is optimized well and we are able to manage adversity also being able to handle things such as injury and how to you know rehabilitate such 
in such in such moments. So these are factors that affect performance, stress, anxiety. These are the main factors, stress, anxiety, tension, and aggression. Over here, you'll see an image and it's, it's, uh, it, talk, it has performance on the left side and stress level at the bottom. Um, towards the green side is where, you know, there's low motivation, low stress levels. And this is extremely low to the point that it's, you're feeling for lack of a better word, bored. So there's nothing really that happens there. And as you move upward, you know, you move into healthy tension, mot your motivated focus, and right in the middle there, that is peak performance. That is the sweet spot. That's where you, op you perform optimally. And we want you to be in that, in that section, um, but also knowing that there'll be times where you're low motivated or highly or, or your stress level is extremely high, which now moves to the right red yeah, side. Me... Yeah, so let me let me explain it again. So as we see on this graph, there's performance on the left side and stress level at the bottom. Um, as we start from the bottom here, we are in the you know low stress, low motivation area, where really, you know, you're not you. It's it's in a sense you're bored. So you're not, you're not doing anything significant towards your growth as an athlete or, your, or anything. There's nothing, your, your performance is quite dismal. As you move upward, now you're going into you know, healthy tension, motivated and focused. And then up to the top there where there's peak performance and we want to get you into the sweet spot of this, where you see that orange area, it's the sweet spot of performance where your, the, the stress that is there and the anxiety that is there are you're able to work them to your benefit, you know, to make it um, help you perform better, help you perform optimally. And to get you to that sweet spot is now where we have the use of the psychological skills we spoke about before, um, just to be able to handle adversity, um, injury, uh, and all that. As we move lower into the red zone, we see fatigue, exhaustion, panic, anxiety, burnout, and breakdown. And this is where your stress level are, stress levels are extremely high. And from and there you're not able to think right. You're feeling, you know, exhaustion basically you um choka zaidi. Um the stress is so much the pressure on you to perform is so high and we'll, we'll work to get you back to this sweet spot of peak performance. Um, so let's talk about performance enhancement. The mental abilities of confidence, concentration and composure are important in being a champion in everything you do. So in contrast to your physical abilities, your mental abilities may flatter, they may change from moment to moment. Leo, today you're feeling good, Kesho, you're not feeling so good. It's, it's, but because your mind is, is susceptible to performance pressures and situational demands. Situational demands meaning any, even just, you know, like the, the, the the game's approaching, you're feeling that pressure, you're feeling, okay, the time is, you know, the time is close. Um, you need to perform better. Even your training sessions are more intense. So this, it shows that your mind is, can, your mind can be easily affected by this, um, these changes. So in order to enhance our performance, we use the psychological skills that I had mentioned before. And this will provide us with strategies to build resilience and resilience meaning you're able to um if there's a you know when you're in a game it's very unpredictable you don't know what your opponent is going to do so being able to react and react well in such a situation so and it includes embracing challenges and opportunities as opportunities for growth as opposed to um, when you see a challenge, you feel like you're completely defeated. Then helps you maintain an optimistic and positive attitude and also engage in self-reflection. 
um, self-reflection is very important because we it helps us become better. Even the painful and the games we've failed, when we take time to sit down and okay and and notice what would you have done in at this point, what would you have done at this point, the changes that you could have made. It helps you become better and also trusting yourself more in your next games. Um, also, and it starts with, you know, with, with training. Um, so the consistent practice of this psychological skills or mental skills will enhance your performance, increase enjoyment and contribute to achieving sport and physical activity self-satisfaction. And that is, that is really our goal to, you know, to, in, to increase all that, to increase your performance, enjoyment, and then increase your, to achieve your um, sport and physical activity self-satisfaction. So, so what, why do you need a sport psychologist? Our mission is to help you as athletes, even working with the coaches and also help coaches be there with you, um, to support you well, so towards reaching your optimal performance levels, to increase your mental well-being, and also that in turn increases health, like your physical well-being, and enjoyment in your sport and also in life. The main things would focus would lead you to focusing on is focusing on your controllables. These are the things that are within your control. You can't control your opponent and how they and how they and how they'll play and what moves they'll make next. But what you can control is you, how you react um, and what next steps you'll take. We'll help you find your why. Why are you doing this? It's not, okay, yes, there's the money aspect, but there's also something deeper than that. There's a motivation that comes from within to do it. It's your enjoyment. It's a stress reliever, even if it can be quite stressful. Also building resilience helping you build mental resilience towards anything that comes about. Um, I'll talk about one main thing that I know really can be, you know, stressful. There's pressure to perform. Then there's also injury. Um, in injury, one, you never know if you're going to get back. You want to be there, but you may not be, be able to be there, you know, because you're you don't know, you're not able, able to spend time with your teammates as you have been spending before. So we'll, you know, working with that, we're coming up with strategies to help you know that um, you're able to overcome this pressure and to use it to your advantage, or you're able to overcome the injury and, and get back and be a better player. Um, then finally, we'll help you identify what you need in all phases of performance, that is pre-performance, the execution in that in the game and post post performance and in all these stages you know pre performance what are your pre performance routines do you listen to music do you um, need to meditate sit in a quiet area like for me my pre performance routine when i used to play was listening to music that was now what used to you and daily kwa bamba <laughs> and get it gets me into the game and gets my mind prepared for the game. Then execution, just ensuring that my, my focus is in the game. Um, and then post performance is relaxation techniques. And you can also use relaxation techniques before and after. And even the music is also a relaxation technique just to help get your body because the emotions and the and the thoughts are all racing and you know, running around in our minds. So we, we need strategies that help us get us to a level where we are calm and we're able to think through our game. So yeah, that is the end of my short presentation. There are my contacts. Um, if, if, you need, if you need any more, you know, further clarification, if you have anything you'd like us to talk about more, please feel free to reach out. But if there are any questions right now, I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Rowena. 
uh, for such a wonderful presentation. I know we have coaches, both coaches and athletes here, and the floor is now open for anyone with any question or anything that they need to be clarified upon. I know there are teams here who are just a match away to qualifying for the uh, Beach World Cup. So they need to prepare more beside their physical preparation. Their minds has to be uh, also fully prepared. And then their spirit has also to be raised and rather raised and connected. So uh, the floor is open. Any questions, any clarifications, anything that you need to know more uh, that can help you prepare and win as we all want you to. Thank you. Uh, maybe maybe it's too new to them, so they're still digesting, but uh, probably you could uh, elaborate on how to manage stress before the game or in the game for both the coach and the athlete. Okay. So um, we'll talk about like uh, stress before the game. This is usually, it's, it's, it's stress is a good thing when it's, in the right amount, we can use it to to give you the excitement and motivation. But when it goes beyond, um, you know, to the point of getting you feeling anxious or tense, um, that's now when now we have this. Um, we use the psychological skills I'd mentioned. Um, let's look at some of them. So I can show you which ones would really help. So for both, um, a good way to manage stress before a game is the application of, you see, like goal setting is something you've done before and this is something you can do with your coaches. It can be on individual basis and, or it can be as a team. But once you share what your goals are for any specific game or even your career, it really helps you have a beacon, have something to look at or look towards. I am. Then the next thing is the self-talk. And coaches also, this is something you can influence a lot, um, is repeating, you know, reassurances and affirmations to your athletes. And also for the athletes, you're also just talking to yourself in a kind way. You know, if you miss a, if you miss a shot, you know, just being understand, you know, understand that, you know, sometimes this happens. What did you, okay, you reflect after, but in that moment, you accept that it has happened. Um, instead of telling yourself, ah, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough. I have not done it. I'll be in trouble. Things like that take you out of the, they increase the levels of stress. And even remembering, when you remember past games where you have failed, it, uh, it just, and it increases that stress level because now you think this will happen again and you will fail the same way, as opposed to now just focusing on positive self-talk. And these are things that are, I am able to do this I can do it. Um, I'm strong enough. I, I'm here. I've been chosen for a reason. You know, just trusting in your ability. You can also use visualization. Um, thinking, thinking about how you will play in the game. You know, in any, any move that your opponent makes, you're able to counter it and counter it well. Um, if if we were all in a room right now, okay, let's let let me just imagine. Let me describe something. If you can all close your eyes, I don't know if you've all closed your eyes, but it's okay. Um, once you close your eyes, imagine you've cut a lemon, and this lemon. Imagine yourself taking a bite of it. Um, of course, all the reactions will be unas. You know, it's, it's not real, but. When you bite it, you feel like ume uma for real. So you're feeling the, the bitterness of the lemon. And that's the importance of visualization. The, the brain doesn't know, doesn't know the difference between past, present, and future. It doesn't know the difference between a thought and reality. So that's, what, that's why it's so important to 
be very aware and you know create an environment where you're able to thrive so when you use visualization when you're thinking of yourself performing a certain skill well when you're thinking of yourself um, beating your opponent think about it to the you know to the detail and and you keep rehearsing this all the time before your game after from from today when you start thinking about your game before you sleep you take 10 minutes and figure out about your game it really helps now you know make everything automatic and get your brain used to the the the, the success and get used to knowing how you know what it needs to do when it needs to do the work it needs uh okay there's a question here what kind What kind of imagery exercises can be done towards nearing a big day like a final? Um, can they emphasize more on the attitude of players in a situation where the opponents are leading and the game is still on? Okay. So let me answer question the first question. So uh, the attitude of players in a situation where opponents are leading, um, this is now what it lies at. Uh, this, this would be very dependent on you know your leadership so your coach your captain also yourselves as athletes but you have to think of it as okay this is this is this is how this game is going the most the, the, the next thing you're going to do is be your is do your best yeah do your best be your best play your best because it's it's so easy for us to fall into the trap of thinking that we have already lost the game and it's not yet the game has not yet ended. Um, yes, you might lose the game, but lose the game knowing that you have done your best, not knowing that, not not being, not it being that it has just, um, you know, you gave up once you saw the the, the opponent is leading, and you say, and sa game niake wachatu yende bas. But you know, if you just emphasize that, you know, just do your best be your best you've trained to your best level you've been ready sometimes that the opponent is more prepared or or this is their day like in, it doesn't mean that it's the end of end all be all it's just the the situation as it is so you accept now you just keep um pushing the athletes you can tell them you know like this is Play your best, do your best, you have it in you. That reassurance also just increases the morale. Which type of the next question, which type of imagery exercises can be done towards sneering a big day like a final? Um, so you can start thinking of okay, if 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 the game, you can start thinking of just what I had explained earlier. Uh, putting yourself in the game, feeling, you know all the, you know, the crowd that is around, just imagining all that step, like step by step, the weather, um, even how you're feeling, then now also now go into the game. Start, how, how have you started the game? How are you reacting to the opponent? All that, now just taking it step by step like that. Those are, that's now one exercise that you can do to prepare yourself as you go into the game so your mind is already there now it's just your body that's going to reach and it will be easier once it starts from the mind yeah sorry oh go ahead okay i just want to talk about uh, a little bit about concentration and the attentional focus and control um this also you know when you do things like the imagery goal setting this helps you concentrate more and focus more on your goal, on the goal of the game that you're going for, like, like, let's say the finals. Um, attentional focus now is knowing what needs your attention at every certain point of your game. Um, so from, you know, if it's, if it's now, this is the time you need to be looking at the ball, that is, you know how to switch seamlessly through that even if it's now being there's 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 two types of focus. There's narrow narrow focus and broad focus. Narrow focus is when you need to focus on the ball. Broad focus is when you need to look at the whole court or the whole pitch or the whole 
um, uh, ring. So knowing when you need to switch between those those two um, areas is also important. Uh, yeah. Okay, there are two more questions. Um, how can you manage a game when you got an injury on the game? I hope that's what you meant. When you got an injury, and then what can be done after a streak of poor performance or choking? So, um, okay, for Lucky, please could you um, further um, give me details on like, you know, the type of injury, what happened at what point of the game? Because usually when you get an injury, during the game, depending on its uh, severity, you might have to be removed. But there are times you can push through injury where if it's if you have your team doctor check it and it's um, it's not too severe, if you're not in too much pain, you can, you know, just and there's a few minutes in the game, you could do you could push through it. But the safer option is to also just um, get to get out because you don't want to also, you know, further injure yourself, making it worse. <clears throat> um, the next question, what can be done after a streak of poor performance or choking? Okay, so with choking, when you choke in a game, you, you, have, you have made your... your Basically, choking is when you're thinking about your next move and you think about it to the extent of you've, you've thought about it to the technical side, and it's something you're used to doing, something umefanya automatically, all, you know, all in all your career, that's when choking happens. So with this, um, it would be good to understand, you know, there are factors outside of it that affect you are you overthinking are the distractions too many are you is 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 it hard for for you to get your focus back into the game when something when you when you perform poorly when you perform a skill poorly in the game itself it does that become now you start thinking too much on on it so with that way what we would do is um help you you know, reduce the overthinking where if it's, if you perform a skill poorly, if you perform this move poorly, if you hit the ball um, badly, it's to be able to be like, okay, that has happened, it's fine. The next hit will be better. I will be better, I will hit it better. Um, that reassurance, that self, it's now back to the positive self-talk, helps you come back into the game and focus as opposed to you kifanyika, then you're thinking, I have failed, I've already lost the game uh, and things and things like that. But this is something that we need to work on um, for some time so that we get you out of that, um, what, to figure out what is happening, what is, what, is, um, what is going on in the mind, what is getting you to the point of poor performance and what is making you choke while you're in the game.